I have been living in Japan for almost two months now, so I thought it'd be a nice time to bring together things that I dislike and like about Japan. Also, this might not even apply to you if you're a tourist or something, because this is more of a my personal vision of things as somebody who moved to Japan. And the thing that I'm going to be talking about aren't even things that are necessarily bad or good, just the things that appeal to me or don't appeal to me. Like, I feel like this would be a good video to come back in 10 months to see how much has changed. Like, for example, when I came here as a tourist the first time, I felt that kombinis were overhyped. But now that I've come to live here, I really started appreciating them. Fresh coffee, pastries, good food, open 24 7. This is the dreamland. I've needed batteries at like 2 a.m., two times that this far. And all I have to do, walk two minutes into the nearest kombini, and I'm done. Okay, I'm done with this segment. I just gotta. Wait until the... Uh, oh, here we go. The family chicky is so good. I didn't even want to eat this. I bought it just for the video to show how good the food in there is. Or like how good the hot food is. But the thing that I actually want to talk about, which I kind of don't like, is how they wrap their things. So one of my favorite chocolates here is uh, the Dara's white chocolate. And as you can see, it has like a paper shell, which is like half plastic, so it doesn't even go under paper, which goes into a full plastic package that also has like a half plastic, half paper bottom. So you can hold your treats like this. I, I don't know. I guess it is for convenience sake. Like you can put it on a table or put it back in here, but it, it just feels like a lot of waste or especially candy. You see this, which is marshmallows with chocolate inside and you think, oh, cool. But literally every single marshmallow is also individually packaged in plastic. <sighs> That's a hard thing to swallow for turtles that is this is this is not food the one thing that i really truly love is the infrastructure most places you'd like to visit in tokyo are just like one to two train lines away from you but without the suica card you're kind of screwed as that means you need to buy tickets individually for every trip or you know you can go my route and get a Pixel Watch, which has a Suica card on it. Keep in mind though, not all Android watches support the Suica, and none of the phones, unless you buy them, support the Suica as well in your Android wallet, unless it's an iPhone. Goddamn, the one time I'm jealous of iPhone people. Also, public bathrooms, they're everywhere. I thought I knew what walkable cities are. You know, I've been to Paris, I've been to London, I've been to Amsterdam, those are really walkable. But Tokyo is on a completely different level. I would say if your destination isn't at least like 30 to more minutes away, just walk there. There's so many things to discover on the way. And like, yeah, it's cool to visit the tourist spots, you know, do the main things. But I feel like half the surprise of being in Japan is just finding those little shops. And I'm not even talking about like finding, you know, just normal stores, like in most countries where you get the same things with like slight varying degrees of uh, quality or a product. Here, Every store specializes in something because they're really small as well. So they do like one or two things, either it'd be like crepes or maybe like little pastries. And most of them will contain tastes that you've never really had. Not to mention, I'm not even talking about stores completely, but like bars or just overall locations. I wanted to fit this in under the public transport section, but I really couldn't because I'm trying to keep, you know, the positives and negatives uh, going one after another. So the one thing that I'm... <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a cultural thing or not, is that everybody here really it feels really sick. Maybe it's because winter was just around, or there's just so much population that there's always a small percentage that is sick. But anytime on public transport, people are just coughing and sneezing and sucking. Personally, I'm from a culture where we blow. You know, we, we blow our noses. And I'd be really interested in knowing if I change my mind in 10 months. Because I'm actually not sure if this is a thing I get used to, or if it's a cultural thing, because I've been taught to be a blower, not a sucker. Though the people here are quiet, like on public transport, nobody's talking, which I really appreciate. I personally, I don't like people talking on public transport. So, you know, it's all good. Also, everybody's friendly. I don't think I've had a single bad interaction with anybody here yet. Worst case scenario, they just shut down and don't really try to speak English. But most of the time they have tried, you know, or at least pulled up Google Translate. I feel like at this point, most people know that, you know, Japan has an insane amount of vending machines, like one vending machine per 100 people here or 10 people here. And they mostly sell, you know, sodas or water, but I've never been a soda person or a water person. And I've never really seen the purpose of those. I thought these were more of a gimmick, but I absolutely love vending machines now, mostly because of this row right here, the hot drinks row. So just pick something out. I can literally pay with my watch. And now I have a nice hot milk tea, which is uh, my guilty pleasure 
like every single night for the past month straight. This is a konbini strawberry crepe. I'm not really proving a point here, I just want to eat this because the pastries or desserts from uh, konbinis are, uh, taste good. This pancake tastes like a pancake. While if you were in Europe or America, if you buy like a pancake or a cold pastry, uh, then most likely you're not eating it for the taste. Like they might be good, but these are pretty much close to fresh ones. Like uh, surprisingly a bit too close. Like what are they putting in here to preserve them this good? You know, one of the things that I thought I'd bring up was the lack of trash cans. Like you literally need to bring every trash that you have with you. And I know that was a really annoying thing as a tourist here, but having lived here for two months already, I don't really mind anymore. Like I've gotten used to it, so I wouldn't put this under a bad thing. One of the things that I thought might be good to bring up was the fact that 7-Elevens or most convenience stores or like most places have an ATM and it's kind of a nice thing to have ATMs everywhere. But then I realized uh, in my past five years of living in Europe or traveling in America and stuff, I've used ATM like once. So this feels more like uh, creating a solution to a problem they've created themselves. I still wanted to mention it though, but consider it more of a neutral thing rather than positive or negative. I wouldn't really consider myself as a bar person or much of a drinker, even though yes, I know I'm Estonian, but the bars in Japan are overpowered. They're too good. <laughs> they make me want to drink every single night. None of them look or feel the same. And since each of them is covering like a different niche, every time you go to a bar, it's a new, interesting and fun experience. So you just kind of want to keep on visiting them. Plus you get to make friends, practice your Japanese and uh, considering the rest of the world, it's quite an affordable experience as well. Like for example, just to prove a point, I looked up a bar one minute away from me and it's uh, a random axe throwing bar. But that also brings me to another point of Japan having kind of unlimited amount of activities. Like if I were to go to one bar or a restaurant every day for a year straight, I don't think I could even finish everything like 500 meter radius of my apartment. Gyms aren't really gyms. When I went to look up gyms near me, most of the gyms were just cardio equipment. Sure, there were maybe some uh, cable rows or you know, some machines, but none of them really had a bench press or a squat rack, you know, heavy things. And you know, if you go further away, sure, you'll find something. But first of all, you're not really gonna go an hour out of your way to go to a gym. That's not gonna happen. And also from what I heard from Liva Kiwi, uh, signing up for a gym is insane here. And I kind of don't want to go through it. But this also might be a misconception on my part. Because I heard from a close friend that he goes to a gym that has uh, heavy weights and stuff there. So I'm gonna try it out next week for myself. Also, this doesn't really apply to tourists. But getting an apartment sucks much more than I thought. Though, you know, that's a story for another time. Either way, uh, I have some stuff to show at home. So let's just head in. One of the things that strikes me odd about apartments in Japan is the kitchens. More specifically, the counter space. Or I guess the lack of it. I've been to quite a few apartments already and our previous apartment had even less space than here. This is like luxury and I don't understand the logic behind. Are you just never supposed to cook at home? Because like this is barely anything. You can chop things here, but that's it. And look at the space for the sink. I could fit myself in here. And I mean, I would demonstrate if I wasn't afraid of it, you know, buckling under my uh, fat ass. But the proportions are just all wrong here. And I kind of see why people would just order in instead of cooking at home. Oh, and the lack of a wardrobe, or I guess the place where you hang your coats. Just none of the apartments really have it. In here, there's, there's a space made for umbrellas, but not for coats. The only workaround we found was uh, the thing that you can hang over the door. Which has worked really nicely. Which brings us to the bathroom. I... <laughs> I love the bathrooms in Japan. 99% of them are just amazing. Heated toilet seats, bidet. I have started to sit down to pee just because it feels nice to warm my butt for like 20 seconds. But the one thing that I do not like about toilets, or I guess the bathroom culture, is the toilet paper. This is already top of the shelf stuff here. And this is like, oh yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't actually shitting. I was just uh, warming my butt. This is already top of the shelf stuff. And as you can see, well, you can quite clearly see my fingers going through it. Usually it's even worse than this. It's like one micron of uh, thickness. And overall, I'm just confused because look at how long one of these slices is. 
it's, it feels like it's meant to be folded, but at this point, just make it double thickness and like shorter. <laughs> and as the final thing that's annoying, is the paperwork. You just need so many things for everything. Like, okay, when you arrive, you get a resident card. That's like an ID card. Sure, understandable. But then you need like a My Numbers card, which also is like a resident card, but you can do more stuff with it, but it's not mandatory. You need health insurance card, which, okay, understandable again. But then you have so much more paperwork and more paperwork, and you need a hunko, but you're only gonna use it like once in your entire lifetime. And it's just a bit annoying, but it's a thing you don't have to deal with as a tourist. And technically, now that I've done all of it, I don't hopefully have to deal with it again. So that's why I'm doing this list. Because I feel like in 10 months time, I'm going to look back and half the stuff that are in here aren't going to annoy me anymore. Or maybe there's new stuff that's going to come up. So again, this is just a list for me. And even though, you know, the pluses and minuses were about the same amount, the negatives really don't outweigh the positives at all or like even come close. Just the bar culture alone would defeat like five to six negative points because it's, it's so much more than, oh, I had to deal with paperwork. Oh, that's so bad. But Another video that I'm thinking of making in the future is about the preconceptions of Japan or misconceptions. I, I don't know. Either way, stuff that you might have heard about Japan that I can fact check if they're true or not. Like, for example, Japanese people being goody two shoes, never doing anything wrong. Well, I'll have you know, I saw somebody going across the road with a red light. Boom. Conception misconcepted. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Matane. Johnny, what, whatever you want.